Okay, so Ed, I am curious, uh, say there were a group of uninitiated adventurers coming into Scornabelle for the first time. I'm wondering what might be there to greet them, what some of the first things that they would see and experience be, and after they make, you know, some time in Scornabelle, what are some of the quests or adventures that they might be presented with that would be exclusive to Scornabelle? Hmm, okay. Well, the first thing they'd see is... Uh, wagons rumbling everybody everywhere and nobody paying the slightest bit of attention to them unless they're in the way. <laughs> okay. Mm. Um, they would see a lot of mud and dust, a lot fewer cobbles than most large cities because that isn't Scornabelle. Scornabelle is basically a glorified caravan camp. And what they'd probably be hired on, pretty pr hired out to be pretty early is... Somebody needs guards, toughs, to stand at, by doors and make somebody look impressive. Because if they're just off the off the boat or just ridden into town and and the guy who might hire them doesn't know them, he's not going to hire them to guard precious cargo or the the person of somebody, the personage of somebody important because he doesn't know these guys. You know, they could be anybody. They they could be kidnappers, in effect. He could be borrowing trouble. So he's not going to hire them to do um, what you and I would call uh, competent, delicate, sensitive, important <laughs> stuff. He's going to sure. hire them to be hired thugs to look impressive. Like, hey, we need you to join that procession there. We need some muscle. So look tough. Look look menacing without actually saying anything to anybody because we don't want any trouble. Because if you say the wrong thing to the wrong person in this town, there will be trouble. So don't actually start any trouble. But um, we want you to, like, look menacing. You can manage that, right? And, and the pay will be commensurate with that pretty low. But then if they stick around for a bit, Somebody will reach what I like to call the desperate stage. They will run out of people to hire because they're a schmuck or they double cross or um, they don't provide enough support and don't hire enough so that the people they hire are always placed in untenable, dangerous situations where they're vastly outnumbered. And then that desperate person will hit upon the new kids in town and say, you look like a competent bunch. You look like you can uh, command a battlefield, uh, command a situation so it doesn't become a battlefield. Well, I, I, I like the look of it. I like the cut of your chip. Um, and then, then they'll get hired to do more important things, more dangerous things, more, uh-oh, what have we gotten ourselves into things? And that will be how they get introduced to Scornibel. Yeah, I feel like that's something that isn't talked about much in D&D, &D, though. It's everyone's trying to exploit labor, right? They're all yes. trying to get the best deal possible. So if you go into a place that's already a little bit shady, like people are going to try and take advantage of the fresh blood and get you to do the stuff that nobody else wants to do. There you go. That's exactly it. It's like, oh, idiots. <laughs> um, uh, I, I mean, if if. If you've been to a real world cattle call, um, where you know we need extras to, to be in the next big movie by so and so, mm -hmm. you may rapidly discover that everybody answers the cattle call, and there are people there who don't have a hope in heck. You know, yeah, sure. There, there will be sure. people who show up who just are not what is being looked for, and that happens in Scornubel like anywhere else. Um, but the other thing is. There is always um, work to be had if you don't mind traveling because everybody needs caravan guards, escorts, outriders, and caravans are arriving and leaving all the time. So if you don't mind being hired in a, in a way that will take you away from Scornubel, there's always work and you can get work right away. Now, if you're on the run from somebody, but you need a legitimate reason to be where you want to, you know, like, Sure, let's go to Cezale. That's halfway across. I've heard good things about Cezale. Yeah, but we can't just walk into Cezale. We have to have a job and money in our pockets and 
We have to have a reason for being there because I, I hear that that's a law and order place. They're going to ask us questions. Oh, okay, here's your job. You have a job as a caravan guard. And it's understood that when you get to Suzeo, your employment ends. And there will be other people looking for caravan guards, and that could be you. And, and so, therefore, it is really good for that. And it's really good for a dungeon master putting an adventure in that is wrapped around the long trip from the Sword Coast to inland or from inland to the Sword Coast. And it, it, it means, instead of it just being a long thing where he rolls for wandering monsters, it, yeah, it becomes yeah. um, an in-game adventure where you learn things about trading costers and um, Priacos and the other caravan companies. And that, of course, is what dominates Scornubel. This is a community built over time. It just sort of grew. I don't mean it was deliberately built. It just sort of grew. By caravan companies. Uh, you did say that Scornubel has been around for over 2,000 years, which is quite a long time. I am curious what Scornubel might have looked like in its earliest stages. And I'm kind of wondering what forces might have influenced Scornubel over the years to lead it to become the kind of place that it is now. Sure. Okay. So at the very beginning, Scornubel was a fairy. Mm across the Chionsar. And then it, uh, uh, well, okay. the Chia, It was the place where the Chionsar was wide enough and shallow enough and slow moving enough that with the aid of a rope to guide your barge so it didn't get swept downstream by the flow of the Chionsar, you could get a barge across. So you could get livestock across on a large enough barge. So if you were a, a drover, taking tons and tons of head of livestock to where they could be sold for food, like Waterdeep, um, you needed to cross the Chionsar here. There was the tradeway, the, 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 the trade road was, was crossing the Chionsar at this point. Um, so what you basically had was, at the beginning, fairies, competing fairies. And then very quickly, you had paddocks where you could camp for the night and wait for daylight to try and make your crossing. And there was a fence and railing, so you had something to guard so people just couldn't come and, and slaughter your animals or raid them in the middle of the night without you knowing, because you could p patrol this perimeter. And then there was like an inn or a shelter um, and set up latrines and so on. Um, because it's like, okay, people are going to be here, so they need these basic facilities. So it's growing from that. And then you have a, wait a minute, it's raining cats and dogs. I don't want to try and cut cross the swollen river at this time. We need a warehouse or something else where we can store this stuff under cover, under, away from the weather for a little bit. So then warehouses start appearing. So that's how Scornabelle is growing over the years. It's like that. And wow. Ta -da. Yeah, hey. I mean, it sounds pretty parallel actually to Western towns, right? In like the gold rush or the migration sure. west, you know, the wa of the wagon trails and everything like that. It sounds like actually pretty similar to, to, to US history in that way. <laughs> yeah. And and there is one uh this gets missed a lot, but if if people read the last um Chandrel um novel, the of the trilogy, um, Hand of Fire. Um, a bit of it is they join a caravan and they come to Scornerbell. You know, so that you, you do get to see a little bit um, in fiction of what it feels like to be in the city and walk the muddy streets and so on. So there's a little bit there. Um, yeah, it's, it's, Scornerbell is, is an interesting lawless place, but it's a, it's, a, it's got its own rough and ready law as in people who don't want to be hassled too much hire these adventuring bands to say, like, you know, don't go around um, molesting the horses because sure. we'll yeah. stop you, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I, I, I'm actually curious now that you mentioned that. So say that I would like to play in a place like Scornabel, but my party isn't necessarily in that geographic region. Are there other... I guess, locations in Faroon that, that echo that same kind of vibe, that Star Wars cantina kind of vibe. Oh, sure. 
but they they tend to all be slightly different. As in Westgate is much larger, okay, than Score Nouvelle, and um, because it had a king for Oven way back, and it has pretensions to being more civilized, which are sure. which are yeah. just that pretensions. But it, it, you can also have a Star Wars cantina there, very much so, um, and. That's the key. You look along the Heartland's trade routes to Zir, Elversalt, um, um, Priapur, um, Burdusk. Uh, you just move along the Uri Aber, blah, blah, blah. Okay, all of these places can have Star Wars Cantina um, spots within them because it's where people from all walks of life at all different lands rub shoulders and they're tired and they've been traveling and they they need a place to drink, and they meet with each other, they make deals with each other, and if somebody cuts up fresh, um, violence occurs, and it's rough yeah. and ready. Now, I mean, yeah. the Rebels was all around long before Star Wars, so I mean, I'm, but I'm just using that as a um, way of shorthand for people who aren't familiar with the realms. This is what I mean. It's, it's like that scene. Um, it's where you'll find people like that. And that sort of situation where um, if you have a weapon under the table, nobody's surprised. Yeah, sure. <laughs> In my uh, Storm King's Thunder game, I very much treated Yarder that way. Mm -hmm. With a lot of the, uh, with, because of the gambling and stuff like that that goes sure. on there, I treated it much the same. Yep. And uh, am I mistaken, doesn't Eric Boyd always end up in Yarder? He's a big fan of Yarder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and any place that is a transshipment point for goods. Yeah, yeah. Is going to end up with some sort of um, Star Wars cantina or similar flavor because there, you people who are rough and ready travelers are stopping for the night or longer than the night. There are warehouses or storage paddocks. There are going to be um, opportunistic thieves. How do I, you know? Yeah, yeah, There's yeah, no yeah. way to sugarcoat that. Um and there's going to be opportunities for adventure. <laughs> yeah. And actually, talking about Star Wars Cantinas, that, that does bring me to my next question, which is, I mean, obviously, you've been writing the realm since the mid-60s. You've told me offline that uh, Scornabelle was very early on in as far as creations of yours. And I'm curious what maybe the early inspiration for Scornabelle might have looked like, what kind of narrative holes, if any, that that was filling for you as you were writing these things in the 60s. Uh, Well, that particular very early realm story, One Comes Unheralded to Zerta, has been published several times, um, including in the, a book, I don't come up with these titles, I cringe at this immodest title, The Best of the Realms, Volume 2, <laughs> the Stories of Ed Greenwood, which is a, you know, a short story collection of my stuff. And um, it was the very first realm story, except it wasn't. And what I mean by that is, it's a cobbled together story that took the very earliest story and some little vignettes and put them together. Um, the first self-contained, written at one sitting, were Mert stories, but One Comes on Herald of Deserta is a story where a lot of powerful people, um, Elminster included, um, some of the seven um, certain rulers, um, all get together. Uh, in one room around a table to drink by, by largely by chance, but not entirely by chance. So as a result, you get to see a lot of them. And therefore it was one that I dragged out and showed to Jeff Grubb when he said, yeah, we need you to show us the realms. That's also, by the way, why Spellfire was written. He was show us the realms, Ed. So we, wow. we need, we wow. need to see the sweep of this big world you've created. And that was one of the prime ways of doing it. That story, you know, it, it's sort of like a, a who's who rogues gallery. Everybody gets together of important people. Um, so you got to see a lot of them together in one very short vignette. So that's why I resurrected it. And yeah, it, it was, uh, Zerta is the southern half of Scornubel before the War of the Lords, when it's still its own independent city. And of course, it was just the South Bank of the Chionsar. The Chionsar runs from east to west at this point geographically. So Scornubel, original Scornubel was on the north bank 
and Zerta was on the south bank, and eventually one swallowed the other. And that's where we are today. Cool. So for my last question, uh, what I did want to ask was if there have been any, I guess, Faerun shaping or, or realms shaping events that Scornabel might have been the center of. And I know that some big names have passed through there. We already talked about, you know, Mert and a lot of other big players in the realms. But I'm curious, kind of, as far as its significance goes for things that have had lasting impact that people still might be seeing in their campaigns if they're up on the lore. It's had a lot of impact, but not um, well-publicized impact. And what I mean by that is... Um, it is the place where a lot of turf battles between trading companies have been fought, and maybe not openly, maybe not swords in the streets, maybe just in back rooms, or so-and-so ends up owning so-and-so. So there's been a lot of that. In Scordervel has been the cradle of a, a lot of that. And it's also in the place during the time of troubles, during the um, God's War, during... Uh, the Avatar trilogy, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. there were a lot of avatars of deities, a lot of avatars of deities who passed through Scornubel. What they didn't do is make a big trumpeting song and dance about it because they'd all been forced down into mortal forms in a world they never made. No, uh, yeah. uh, they, they, they've been forced down. Um, they realized they'd been largely stripped of their abilities because they couldn't get back to their divine homes. They suddenly tried to do things and were blocked from doing things. And they were fearful and they were aware, sort of half aware of what was going on and what they had to do. So the last thing they wanted to do for most of them, not all of them, but most of them, the last thing they wanted to do was say, Hi, I'm God so-and-so, <laughs> because they didn't feel ready to handle what attacks may come their way. So when they were in Scornerbell, they were being pretty quiet about who they were, and they were trying to get other places. Scornerbell was the Crossroads Caravan Trading City. So whether you were on foot or joining a caravan, or you were just going to hire and uh, buy a nag and take off on your own, this was where you, oh, okay, all roads go that way. So that road goes to Waterdeep. That road goes, oh, okay, right. I know where I am now. Let's go. So a lot of them found their way to this place, and we may not have known about it at the time, but it was very important to the wider realms later on. We just didn't hear about it then. Yeah, I was going to say, it seems like the kind of place that even if you are kind of a big wig mucky muck, you probably don't want it to be super public that you're going through Scornabelle or spending any significant time there. So yeah. I imagine a lot of stuff has, has kind of gone on, you know, behind the curtain in Scornabelle that we might not even be aware of, but that opens up like a ton of possibility for, for dungeon masters and game masters to take that and say, okay, cool. I need a location to make something impactful happen that might be, you know, leaving impacts on my players right now. And uh, yep. let's just make it Scornabelle, right? Yep. It yeah. is the perfect place for that. Yeah. Yeah.